So I don't know if you guys have heard, but Spaceballs 2 is happening. And Spaceballs 2 just got a major update from one of the movie's writers, Josh Gad. Now, most people probably know Josh Gad as the voice of Olaf from Disney's Frozen. And here's what Josh Gad had to say about Spaceballs 2 to Forbes. Quote, Without MGM taking me into their Culver prison cells, I can tell you that the draft is done. Everyone, everybody who's read it has been blown away. The process of working on this with and alongside Mel Brooks has been one of the highlights of my career. It was sort of a fever dream that this all happened. Mel has been so unbelievably supportive, involved, and electrified by this because it's the, it's the one that surprisingly got away. It's a dream to be able to finally make the reality prophesized by Yogurt in the first movie happen. I can't say more than that. I can't tell you anything beyond the process at this point, but I can tell you every hour of every day right now is spent making this project closer and closer to reality, and I think we're nearing the end zone here. End quote. I know that you guys read the title of this video before clicking on it and thought that this was going to be some negative piece on this news regarding Space Wars 2. While I personally was against the idea of a sequel to Spaceballs for years and years, I believe that Spaceballs 2 can actually work in 2025 and beyond, and I have distilled it down to three major reasons why I believe Spaceballs 2 can actually work today, whereas if they tried to make Spaceballs 2 back in the 90s or even in the 2000s, hell, even the early 2010s, it wouldn't have as much effect as it could have today. And the first reason that I want to go over is the fact that movie franchises have gotten bigger since the 1980s. What Mel Brooks parodied in Spaceballs w wasn't just Star Wars. It was also it was also Planet of the Apes because people need to people forget that there were five movies in the original Planet of the Apes series. But still, Planet of the Apes largely died after Battle for the Planet of the Apes. But Star Wars did not die after the year 1983. It continued on in books, in comics, in video games. People forget that Shadows of the Empire was like the biggest thing in Star Wars in the mid 90s. It started as a video game. Then it was a comic miniseries. And then it was a novel. And then obviously the prequel trilogy happened. And that led to the whole Clone Wars multi multimedia franchise. Still, so, movie franchises expanded beyond movies it's now movies it's now tv shows it's now comic books it's now video games all stuff that really could not have been predicted back in 1987 you know 1986 1987 when the original space balls was being produced and released so I think that's one thing that Spaceballs 2 has going for it is that it can really poke fun at all of the at, at all at what franchises are doing now. It's not just merchandising, merchandising. Spaceballs the lunchbox, Spaceballs the coloring book, Spaceballs the breakfast cereal, Spaceballs the flamethrower. That was the original parody. It was all the merchandising that Star Wars created. Well, franchises now are beyond just simple merchandise. Like I said, they're movies, they're TV shows, they're video games, they're books, they're comic books, they're, you know, they're, they're on the internet, so on and so forth. Anyway, I'm, I'm talking in circles, so let's just move on to my second reason because I don't want to repeat myself. The second reason why I believe Spaceballs 2 can work is because legacy sequels like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice are getting a lot of buzz and box office dollars, and this is what didn't exist back in the 80s and 90s, even in the 2000s, were legacy sequels. I mean, okay, there was the oddball legacy sequel. The first one that comes to mind is a movie called The Color of Money. That's with Paul Newman and Tom Cruise. It came out, I believe, in 85. It came out just before Top Gun. That was a sequel to the movie The Hustler that came out like 25 years prior to that. But still, if we're looking at, you know, the history of Hollywood, legacy sequels really weren't a thing. I mean, sure, reboots have happened. Like, Batman has gone through how many reboots since the Tim Burton era? You had the two Tim Burton movies. Then you had Joel Schumacher was a soft reboot with Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. And then Batman Begins comes out, and it's not a sequel to Batman and Robin. It was an outright reboot of Batman. 
And then you get Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. That's yet another reboot of Batman. Still, legacy sequels, you know, sequels to movies that were 20, 30, 40 plus years old are something that's actually relatively new that really kickstarted in the 2010s. And unfortunately, with the success of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Top Gun Maverick, uh, Star Wars Force Awakens, so on and so forth, you're going to see a lot more legacy sequels, you know, start coming out. And so what Spaceballs 2 can do is that it can focus on not just the movie franchises themselves getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but it can also focus on the idea of, hey, we are a sequel to a movie that came out almost 40 years ago. And like I said, that's something that they could not have done in the 90s because legacy sequels did not exist, not to the extent they exist now. Same within the 2000s and even in the early 2010s. But if you're going into 2025 onward, why not make fun of the fact that Spaceballs 2 is a legacy sequel to the first Spaceballs movie that came out 35, 40 plus years ago? And that's my third and final reason why Spaceballs 2 can work is that Spaceballs 2 can parody both franchises and legacy and legacy sequels alike because the film industry is in a different is is in a different spot today than it was back in 1987 when Mel Brooks was initially making fun of the corporatism in the film industry in Spaceballs with the merchandising merchandising it's gone so far beyond merchandising, like I said, and I know I'm repeating myself, but I want to hammer it home. Okay, the original Spaceballs parodied what movie franchises were at the time. Spaceballs 2 can parody what franchises and legacy sequels have transformed into over the last 40 plus years. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to end the video off with this because I did repeat myself a lot in this video. If this movie is called Spaceballs 2, The Search for More Money, it could actually work better today than it would have 20, 30 years ago. As I said, 20 years ago, legacy sequels weren't really a thing. Aside from movies like The Color of Money with Paul Newman and Tom Cruise, it's the legacy sequel to 1961's The Hustler, they were pretty rare. Nowadays, every major franchise is getting legacy sequels. They're not getting re they're not they're really moving away from reboots now. They're more doing legacy sequels. You know, they did a legacy sequel to Flatliners. They did a legacy sequel to Beetlejuice. They did a legacy sequel to Top Gun, and they have done now two legacy sequels to Tron with Tron Aries uh, scheduled to come out, I believe, 2025 or 2026. If Spaceballs 2 makes fun of the fact that it's a legacy sequel to a 30 plus year old movie, then it could work as a critique of modern Hollywood decision making to do all these unnecessary sequels, legacy sequels, remakes, reboots, etc. They could even make fun of the fact that they can't bring back Barf or Dot Matrix because both John Candy and Joan Rivers have since passed away. Hell, Hell, have Spaceballs 2 open up with the new characters needing to find a map to Lone Star and having Bill Pullman only show up for the final scene of the movie with no dialogue a la Mark Hamill in The Force Awakens. Yes, I am excited for Spaceballs 2, if and only if it continues the tradition of the original movie by making fun of franchises and unnecessary sequels that the original itself mocked.